Joining me now is former Trump campaign aide George Papadopoulos. He is the author of a brand new book. It's called Deep State Target, How I Got Caught in the Crosshairs of the Plot to Bring Down President Trump. So tell me about your meeting with Azra Turk. Thanks for having me. Um, sure. So let's um, look at what happened exactly here. In September of 2016, I received an unsolicited email in my inbox from a man named Stefan Halper. I've never heard of this person in my life. I did a simple Google search on him, and I saw that uh, he was a Cambridge professor and, had, <coughs> and he had worked uh, for four U.S. administrations. And he wanted to uh, pay me $3,000 to basically write a report on uh, the energy business in Israel and Cyprus, which I was a recognized expert at the time on. Uh, and he flew me to London. He paid a five-star accommodation. And he told me, before I meet with you, my assistant wants to meet with you first, and she's going to take you out for drinks. And that's when I met this individual, Azra Turk, which, of course, was a fake alias. And uh, I was a little suspicious about it because I, I didn't have any understanding why I was meeting a different person, especially a Turkish national. Um, and that's why I disabused the claim that this was some sort of FBI agent. And even the New York Times, uh, I think yesterday, suggested that she was an FBI and likely working for some other intel agency. Um, so I was a little suspicious because uh, she barely spoke English. She was very flirty. Uh, she expressed that she was a Turkish national. And she was probing me about two different things. One, it was about my own background in the energy business, a very sensitive uh, topic I was working on throughout my career in the Middle East. And the second thing was about Trump and Russia. So there was a two-angled approach here, one about George Papadopoulos as an individual and my background uh, dealing with other governments, not Russia, and then Trump and Russia. So it was a very bizarre meeting and, uh, of course, there was nothing, no fruit to bear from this meeting because, of course, there was no conspiracy, and I have never even met a Russian official in my life. So, did she did she offer you sex? Uh, she, uh, of course, overtly didn't offer it, but uh, she made it very clear that uh, that was on the table if uh, we, we continued to uh, enjoy each other's company. And uh, as you saw, in here's the, what uh, you wrote. Here's what yep. you wrote in your book about Azra Turk. We'll put it on the screen. Azra Turk is a sure. vision right out of central casting for a spy flick. She's a sexy bottle blonde in her 30s. She isn't shy about showing her curves as if anyone could miss them. She's a fantasy's fantasy. If this is what academic researchers look like, I've been going to the wrong school, I laughed to myself. Do you know today, George, who is she? <laughs> I, I have no idea who this person is, um, and, and I'm actually very curious to find out more, and I think uh, some of the investigations into what happened in 2016 are probably going to uh, bear that answer for, for everyone. Um, we now know that uh, she was in some sort of uh, research associate, as I explained. She just didn't fit that profile. She really matched the profile of, a, of some sort of agent, so I was very suspicious right away about her. And, uh, and as I explained in my book as well, Halper uh, didn't present himself well as a Cambridge academic. So the whole operation, I'm not sure if it was rushed, it was uh, well-crafted, but uh, I don't think it was the best and brightest that were thrown my way. So the Times, the Times story from yesterday, the Times seems convinced that she was sent by the FBI. Are you convinced that she was sent by the FBI? Well, I don't know. Um, I was watching uh, Adam Gold, uh, Goldman's, I think his, that's the reporter's name. Uh, he was on um, your show, not your, on uh, Anderson Cooper's show last night. And Anderson Cooper, I think, asked him pointedly, did, was she working for the FBI? And he said, well, I can't answer that question yet. I'll just say she was a government informant or, some, or something like that. So if she was FBI, why not just say she was FBI? So, and of course, as I just explained, the profile did not match an FBI operation. It was in London. Uh, as the New York Times suggested, the, the British government was uh, notified about the operation. And then, of course, I met the British government the same day I was meeting Stefan Halper and Azra Turk. So this was very well planned. I believe uh, the British were involved in this. Uh, I think the New York Times makes it very clear that they were. So why would the FBI be operating in, in London? It, it just doesn't make sense to me, but uh, I could be wrong. Okay, so let, let's get to the real controversy here as to whether this was a good or a bad thing. The president, by the way, tweeted yesterday, finally mainstream media is getting involved too hot to avoid. Pulitzer Prize, anyone? The New York Times on front page finally details effort to spy on the Trump campaign. This is bigger than Watergate, but the reverse. And, and this is the question I'm asking of my audience this hour. So is this nefarious? 
Is this spying or is this the sort of thing that Americans ought to be applauding on the basis of it being good counterintelligence work? In other words, respond to the argument that the FBI would be derelict in its duty not to have taken a close look at you. Okay. Um, I understand your point about people like Paul Manafort, Michael Flynn, and Carter Page because they actually had established ties to Russia and you made that very clear. However, I, as an advisor to both the uh, Ben Carson and Donald Trump campaigns, after working in both the energy business and at a neoconservative think tank in Washington, D.C. for six years, uh, did not have Russia contacts. And the last thing I was doing at all was promoting Russian interests. It just didn't fit my agenda. So why on earth would I be investigated for some sort of Russian ties when it was clear by the time I joined two presidential campaigns that every intelligence agency in the world could have known who my real contacts were and none of them were Russia. So where did well, this whole Russia conspiracy come from that I fit myself into? And I think that's what uh, people like Devin Nunes and others are actually looking into now to find out if this was really an orchestrated event surrounding me. Okay, so all I know is what I, what I read it in this puppy, the, the Mueller report. I've got my bound sure. version with me, as a matter of fact. And, and to hear the Mueller report tell it, you are acquainted with Mifsud. He comes back from Russia, tells you they've got dirt on Hillary. You go out and get hammered one night, tell the Australian diplomat, hey, Russia's sitting on all this information about Hillary. Then comes the WikiLeaks dump, and now the Australians tell it to the Americans. In that circumstance, and knowing that you've got Carter Page, you've got Paul Manafort, You've got Mike Flynn, who are all out there with these contacts. Why shouldn't the FBI have pursued that lead? Okay, so as, as I stated, that was an old narrative. And, and you're right about Manafort, Flynn, and Page and their ties to Russia. Look, I testified to Congress about six months ago where we actually were discussing people like Alexander Downer. And if you look through very carefully through my transcript, you'll see that this was not some random concerned diplomat meeting with me. And, I, and it's my firm conviction that he was actually an asset that was sent to make contact with me. And just look through my testimony to Congress, and I'm sure that information eventually will be revealed after certain materials declassified. Now, leading up to my meeting with Downer, where you suggest or the New York Times suggested I was drunk, which even Alexander Downer I have both confirmed we weren't even drinking. We had one drink. Um, I was connected with three intelligence agencies leading up to my meeting with Downer, the U.S. intelligence agencies, the British and the Australians, and even the Israelis made contact with me by mid-April. I didn't meet Alexander Downer until May 10th. So how did this meeting even emerge? And the surroundings and the events uh, that led up to this meeting with Downer are very suspicious. And look, I understand uh, we want to simplify things and make things very black and white in a counterintelligence investigation, but I assure you that uh, now that these new investigations are uh, continuing, most of these events surrounding my life, including how I even met Joseph Mifsa, Downer, Halper, these were all going to be revealed. And look, maybe it's the truth. Maybe, uh, you know, I slipped up to Downer, but, you know, I don't think I did because I ended up reporting Alexander Downer to Bob Mueller and the FBI myself for spying on me. And I actually testified to Congress that I felt he was doing the same thing. So there's something that, uh, you know, I think is going to be clarified moving forward. Um, it's a very complicated I hope so. story. It's a very complicated I, I story. I hope so. Let me, yeah. let me, let me, let me just say in, in the same way that I, I wanted to be uh, data driven and apply critical analysis to, to the collusion issue. I'm keenly interested now to know how did the investigation begin and Absolutely. was it uh, based on merit? So, so let, let's, let's see where it leads. Thank you for coming uh, on. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. What are your thoughts? Tweet me at Smirconish. Go to my Facebook page. What do we have so far, Catherine? From Facebook, I think. Uh, if you ever, if you're ever investigating a man, always send a beautiful blonde. If you're ever, got it. If you're a, well, honeypot, Lori, isn't that what they call this? This is like the classic honeypot, although it sounds to me like Mr. Papadopoulos is suspicious as to whether it was really the FBI who sent her. But it's, it's Jason Bourne stuff.